page 90 in your textbooks. As we get started, we'll be reviewing today and tomorrow for your exam coming up on Wednesday. For those watching on YouTube, that is lesson 40. Lesson 40 will be your exam. So we've got here lesson 38, tomorrow lesson 39 in which we review, and then lesson 40 on Wednesday. And here is your exam. And then uh, that'll wrap up chapters one and two. Page 90, though, let's take a look at the homework that you had. Lots of practice with scientific notation. Um, on page 90, numbers 1 through 21, have your books open and that homework out as well. You weren't here, so I did send a video to you so you could watch it. We did, we did talk to you briefly. You just didn't do the homework. I didn't have my book. Uh, okay, so you really couldn't follow along too well anyway then. Yeah. All right. What a shame. He was heartbroken. Mm -hmm. And me. So. All right, let's take a look at the answers here together. Number one, adding those numbers in scientific notation. The only real requirement to add scientific notation, Evie, is that they have to have the same uh, exponents or powers of 10. And they do. And we said that for pre algebra, we always will have the same powers. Make life a little easier on you here. Don't want to strain anyone's brain too bad here. Uh, number one, what did you get when you added, speaking of strained brains, Glenn? 8.1 times 10 squared is correct. That was no strain for his brain, though. Uh, Nina was number two, Evie. 9.3 times 10 to the fifth. Yeah, 10, or 9.3 times 10 to the fifth. Uh, number three was really straightforward, Aubrey. 1.2 times 10 to the negative third. Good, 1.2 times 10 to the negative third. Uh, number four, Lexi. Uh, 1.3 times 10 to the seventh. Yeah, 10.3, or 1.3 times 10 to the seventh. Uh, number five, uh, Danielle. 5.9 times 10 to the ninth. Good, 5.9 times 10 to the ninth. Number six, uh, Michael. Uh, 4.4 times 10 to the ninth. I think you tried to add or something here. We're subtracting. Uh, Hayden? Uh, Six times 10 to the there we go. Yeah, you borrow. So 14 minus 8 is 6, and then 2 minus 1 is 1. Keep a decimal. 1.6 times 10 to the negative 7th should have been our answer. Number 7 to Michael for redemption. Two types of bacteria were being studied. Uh, the first type was 4.5 times 10 to the negative 5th, negative 5 inches long. And the second type was 3.2 times negative 10 to the negative 5 inches long. Uh, what is the difference in the lengths of the bacteria? So 1.3 Good. Inches. 1.3 times 10 to the negative fifth inches is the difference in length. We need to subtract there. Um, anyone perfect? One through seven. Okay, good. Several of you. Number eight. Uh, write those numbers in scientific notation. Letter A. What would that be in scientific notation, Aubrey? Seven times, six. Seven times 10 to the sixth. Good. Seven times 10 to the sixth. Uh, letter B, Lexi. 4.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. Good. 4.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. And letter C, Glenn. I think that's a point three point five seven six eight times ten squared. I think you just misread your seven as a two. Okay, I'm pretty sure you had a seven there. All right, number nine, changing to standard form, and uh, letter A is just obnoxious looking. Speaking of which, um, Evie, what'd you get for this one? <laughs> Danielle was braced for it. <laughs> 419.32, and Jaden thought I was going to call on her, but she can't answer, so of course I wasn't going to call on her. All right, uh, <laughs> picking on Jaden, got to do that. All right, uh, letter B, 2.5 times 10 to the negative fourth. What would that be, Hayden? 0.00025. 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, is correct with, two, with three zeros after the decimal. Uh, letter C, 4.1 times 10 to the eighth. What would that number be, Michael? 410. Good, 410 million is correct. Great job. Questions on those? All right, number 10. Now these we initially add, and when we add them up initially, Danielle, we're going to get... 13 times 10 to the 13.2 times 10 to the 4th. Right, so initially we would have gotten 13.2 times 10 to the 4th, but we can't leave the answer this way. Why not, Hayden? Oh, 
Right, let's supposed to be one digit before the decimal, which means, Hayden, that this number is too big. If it's too big, we have to fix it. One point three two, and we move the decimal over once. But we have to reflect that it was big to start with by making the exponent or the power of ten that little bit bigger, and we're going to bump it up to a ten to the, and that should be our answer here. One point three two times ten to the fifth power. Number eleven, the same kind of thing happens. Let's go straight to your final answer, though, Danielle. Times 10 to the 6th. Good, 1.42 times 10 to the 6th power. Number 12, what do we get when we subtract here, Evie? Uh, 6 times 10 to the 6th. Good, initially we're going to have a 0.6 times 10 squared, but that's too small. We need a digit before the decimal, so we have to move the, de the decimal backward to make it a 6. But because the number was too small, we need to show that by making the exponent smaller and take it down to 6 times 10 to the first, or just 6 times 10, but technically, anyway. Uh, number 13. So what did you get for your final answer on 13? Glenn? 4.5626 On number 13? Mm -hmm. Oh, he added. Okay, yeah, thank you, uh, Lexi. Lexi's uh, like, oh, it was supposed to be subtraction. You added, it got 1.56 times 10, or 15.6 times 10 to the 6th, then you bumped it up to a 1.56 times 10 to the 7th. We were subtracting, so Lexi, what should we have gotten? Uh, 8.0 times 10 to the 6th. Well, initially, 0. 0.8 times 10 to the 6th, but we need to move the no, decimal move backward to make it yeah. 8 times 10 to the... 7. Well, the number was too small, oh, so we need to make it one smaller. Oh. Oh, five. 10 to the fifth. There we go. We're moving the exponent, or you can think we're moving the decimal backward, so we need to drop the exponent. Where here we move the decimal forward, bump the exponent upward. Um, let's see here. Let's go back to Glenn for redemption on 14. 1.2 times 10 to the third. Good. Our final answer 1.2 times 10 squared. Number 15, Michael. Read the answer you had. Oh, I subtracted instead. So what was your answer? You can't read your writing. Okay, that would be a problem on the exam if I couldn't read your writing, right? Aubrey, what did you get for 15? 1.86 times 10 times 10 to the third. Hmm. Uh, uh, 9 plus 7 is 16, not 18. That's what happened there. Uh, but you might have misread 9 plus 9 if you just wrote your 7 sloppy. Um, Evie? 1.66 times 10 to the 10 cubed. There we go. 16.6 times 10 squared becomes 1.66 times 10 cubed. Questions on those? Questions on those? Yes, ma'am. 13, 14, and 15 are confusing. Are confusing. Okay. Let's take a look then. Number 13, we've got an 8.2 times 10 to the 6th. And the problem, I think, here is they were written side by side, right? To save space because, you know, mathematicians are lazy, including the people who write your book. And it's faster to type it all in one line than I have to line this up. But if you took the time, as Michael said, to write it on paper, you'd be able to see the work a little bit easier. And you'd end up getting that 0.8 times 10 to the 6th, which becomes... Move it over once, drop it down, 8 times 10 to the 5th, a little bit easier. Uh, same thing on the next one, right? You've got 6.2 times 10 to the 1st plus the 5.8 times 10 to the 1st. Again, if you're adding it, you can see the carrying a lot easier. And you have to move the decimal over because it's too big, 1.20, with or without the 0, by the way. And then bump the exponent up to show that it was big. Does that make sense? And so on the last one, when you add, you're going to get 16.6 times 10 squared. And then again, move the decimal over because it was too big. So make the exponent bigger, 10 cubed. That makes sense now? Yeah, yeah. For 16, 38 feet. How many inches? Let's get back on track here, Michael. 456 inches. Uh, number 17, 11 pounds. How many ounces? Evie. 176. In both cases, multiplying because we're going from larger to smaller. Number 18, we don't have to worry about larger, smaller, any of that nonsense. It's just King Henry. And uh, we're going from king to the unexpected. And uh, what do we get, Hayden? Uh, 25,000. 25,000. Good. Uh, number 19, we're multiplying by 8. Initially, what will we get, Aubrey? Um, I just have like... You're just so smart, you did the whole thing in your head at once. 
Well, what would we get if we just multiplied by 8 straight up? What would we get? Right, 8 pounds, 24 ounces, but it only takes how many ounces to make a pound? 16. 16. So we're going to take 16 of the 24 ounces, mush that into another pound, keep our leftover ounces. What do we end up with for our final answer? 10 pounds and 4 ounces. Oh. I think you did 10s. I think you treated it like it was 10 ounces to a pound. Let's go back to the uh, 8 pounds. I can't write. 8 pounds, 24 ounces. I'm still blaming my seat. And we said it takes 16 ounces, right, to make a pound. So we're going to take our minus our 16, we're going to add one. So we should end up with now 8 plus 1. Oh, nine. 9. 9 pounds. There we go. And uh, 24 ounces minus 16 gives us 14 minus 6 gives us. Eight. eight ounces. There we go. You could also say nine and a half pounds, I guess, but they wanted the mix to measure nine pounds, eight ounces. Uh, number 20, we are subtracting. We're going to have to do a little bit of borrowing, though, to make that happen. What do we end up with for our answer on this one, Danielle? Good. Borrow from the nine feet, get eight feet, add those 12 inches to get 18 inches. So it's eight feet, 18 inches minus four feet, eight inches gives us four feet, 10 inches for our answer. And the number 21, what do we initially get for our answer, Glenn? 40 feet, wait, what? That's our final answer, 40 feet, 10 inches? I was asking for the initial answer, but we'll go with what he said, which is our final answer, 40 feet, 10 inches. Initially, 39 feet, 22 inches, but 12 of those inches became the 40th foot and left us with 10. 40 feet, 10 inches, our answer. All right, questions on the homework. That took way too long, but whatever. It is pretty, it's pouring, in fact. Just like the song says. Anyway, we won't go there. It's not a, it's that's not a, another country song. song. What? That's another country song. It's raining, it's pouring, Mr. Nodaski's Oh, wow. I don't know. Anyway, I'm old. All right. <laughs> yeah, see if that's you passed this I class. Exited you should have waited until after the exam. That's to, why uh, I exited that part out. I wanted to talk to you. Evie is wise. Evie says she's going to keep her mouth to shut until after the exam. Evie is wise. Be like Evie, Danielle. Okay. Well, at least in that respect. All right. <laughs> 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 Let's see. Is there anyone I haven't insulted yet? Who's left? Hayden. Hayden. No, Michael. You the insults speak for themselves. We won't even bother with Hayden. No. Now, Michael over there. Michael's just sitting there working hard, doing his best. Hey, I ain't said nothing. <laughs> ain't said nothing. All right. I ain't said nothing. Let's review for your exam. Um, let's go all the way back to the beginning of the year because that's where the exam is going to go. We talked about addition and we said that when we add numbers together, the numbers that are getting added together class are called add-ins. Add add-ins. Add you might want to jot that term down if you forgot. Add-ins. And when you add up all the add-ins, you get an answer that's called the sum. sum. With subtraction, we said that the first term, the top number in the subtraction problem, is called the minuend. minuend. And then the second number that's underneath it, like a boat under the water, is the subtrahend. And then the answer is called a difference. Minuend minus subtrahend equals difference. And then numbers that get multiplied together are called... Factors. factors. And we did quite a bit with factoring numbers, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, and factors get multiplied to give you something partial. called a partial. product. Now, if there's two-digit, right, two-digit factors, you end up with some partial products or three-digit, you know, multiple partial products, but you end up with one final product. With division, the number that goes in the division house is called the dividend. dividend. The number outside of the number you are dividing by is called divisor. the divisor. divisor. And then the answer is called the quotient. 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 He's enthusiastic, at least, if not occasionally accurate. All right. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. Fractions. Uh, the top number in a fraction is called the? Numerator. Numerator. The lower number is called the? Denominator. denominator. Uh, but... We also talked about something that looks like a fraction, really is, in a sense, a fraction, but we call it another name, a ratio. And ratios can be written other ways as well. For instance, if I write this, this could mean 5 eighths, the fraction, or it could be read as a ratio, 5 to 8. And if you chose to read it as a ratio, we could also write it with the word 2 or with a colon. Colon. Okay, so 5 colon 8. All of these are read 5 to 8. Now, if we're thinking of it as a ratio, it's no longer numerator and denominator, but rather 
Oh, uh, is the antecedent. Uh, so the first number is the antecedent, and the second number is the consequent, the antecedent and the consequent. If I were to set this ratio equal to another ratio, say 15 to 24, we now have something called a uh, proportion. Proportion. Two ratios set equal to each other. It's called a proportion. And uh, these two numbers here, the second and third numbers, as we read one, two, three, four, our second and third numbers are called the Extreme. means. The means are in the middle. And then the um, first and the last numbers are called the extremes. It's like if there were a race of four people. Here, we're going to insult Hayden a little bit. If there were a race of four people, I'm just picking on Hayden. Uh, if we were having a race, though, the person who comes in first is the winner. And he's really happy. And the person who comes in last is really sad. Those are extreme reactions. The people who finish second and third, they're not happy, but they're also not bummed because, you know, we're in the middle, right? We're in the middle of the pack. But at least we weren't last. But it would have been nice to be first, but whatever, right? The person who first has bragging rights, and the person in last is sad. All right, anyway. I remember it just because I'm the mean child out of all of us. And you're the second kid? And I'm the middle. You're so middle. I'm middle and mean. Middle and mean. All right. So think of Danielle if the question comes up on the test. Who is middle and mean? Danielle is middle and mean. How are you going to remember she's middle? I have no idea. I didn't even know she was middle. All right. <laughs> anyway, turn to page 135. Turn to page 135 in your textbooks. And do some problems on page 135. Now, real quick. We've got there's some decimals. And remember, when you're adding or subtracting decimals, it's important, class, to make sure the decimals are lined up. lined up. But with multiplication, you don't have to worry about, hold on, I didn't say to start yet. Right? Uh, just to turn to page 135. We're, we're going to get there in a second. With multiplication, we don't have to line up decimals, but we do have to keep track of how many, how many total decimals there are in the factors. That's how many total places in the uh, answer which is called the product. product, very good. With division, we just don't divide by decimals, do we? If there's a decimal in the divisor, we have to move, have to move, move it out, boink, 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 until it's gone. But whatever we boink, boink, boink in the divisor, yeah, got a boink, boink, boink in the dividend as well. And then make sure you put it up top in the quotient, don't lose track of it. With fractions, we said to add or subtract fractions, you have to have a denominator. common denominator. denominator. So you're gonna have to change the way those fractions look, for instance, on number five. On number six, you can't add or subtract that way. You have to change the denominator. And of course, when the denominator changes, you also have to change the numerals. Well, don't act so bored, Lexi. Don't, rem don't forget, I haven't graded your exam yet. All right, and then <laughs> number seven, multiplication of fractions. Those are some big numbers to multiply. I don't want to multiply big numbers, but I don't have to. Because when you multiply, we cancel stuff, right? You look at numerators and denominators like, hey, what can I cancel out of that numerator that cancels with one of the denominators? Remember, you never cancel across. You can cancel up and down. It's called reducing. Or you can cancel diagonally, right? Still technically a form of reducing. And then number eight's a division problem. So it's nine, right? Division. Do we ever really divide fractions class? Uh, uh, yeah. No, we multiply by the, by the reciprocal. What is number 10? A complex fraction. A complex fraction. But really, it's just another fraction. division yeah. problem where we multiply by the reciprocal. And of course, 11 and 12, we have a couple of proportions there. Uh, how do we solve proportions? Two ways. Uh, uh, you go solve. and you multiply the thing that's not there. So like 5 into 10 equal is ratio. 2. So then it's there we like go. The equal one. ratio method. Figure out what you got to change in the top. What you changed in the top, do the same in the bottom. Or if the equal ratio method just isn't there, there is the fallout, fallback option. Uh, just multiply the, the number of x. Cross, cross, multiplication. cross multiplication, right? Because in any proportion class, the product of the, the means, means equals, equals the product, product of the extremes. Do numbers 1 through 12. Page 135, 1 through 12.
finished. A couple more minutes to be finishing up. about one more minute to be finishing.
almost finished. All right, pencils down, even if you're not finished yet. Let's take a look at the answers here, and then I want to go over any questions you have. Meaning, bless you, you missed the problem and you don't understand why, or you couldn't remember how to do the problem, so you skipped it. Because obviously on the exam, neither of those is good, right? If you got it, you're good to go. We don't need to worry about it. So let me read through the answers, have you check your own, see how you did out of 12. These are all similar to what you'll see on the exam. Number one, when you line up the decimal, you should get 63.3. I would have written the 12 as 12.0. 12 so that way you keep everything lined up neatly, but 63.3, our answer. For number two, when you subtract, you should have gotten 2,078.033. Again, if you'd written that second number with a zero at the end, it might have helped to fill the gap, but really not necessary. You just have three minus nothing there is still three. Right, again, 2,078.033. Number three, you should have ended up with just one decimal in the answer. You get 204.8. 204.8. Uh, number four, when I do the division, I'm not going to so much try to divide by 78 because I don't know my 78 times tables. I'm going to use eight as my estimate and say, how many times does eight go into this? But I'm going to then multiply by the 78 and so forth. And I'm getting 582 for the answer. 582. How many perfect on the top row? Perfect on the top row. Questions on the top row. You say, can you please show us how this has worked? Four. Number four. Yeah, so we've got the 45,396 being divided by the 78. Now, I will say, if you're weak in division on the exam, do the division last, right? But you still want to try to do it. I'm going to use eight as the estimator, though, because the seven's followed by an eight, which bumps it up to pretty much an eight. How many times does eight go into four, class? Zero. That's a stupid question. How many times does eight go into 45? Five. Five times, right? So one, two digits here. Remember, think of this as one collectively, two digits. I'm going to put the, the five, excuse me, that just said right here. Five times eight, though. Forty. Carry the four. Five times seven plus four. Thirty-nine. Thirty-nine. And we subtract. Three minus nothing. Three. Borrow. And uh, fifteen minus nine. Make sure you compare. Is sixty-three smaller than seventy-eight? What if it were bigger? I'd bump this up to a six and I'd do it again, right? But it's smaller, so we're going to go and bring down the nine. How many times does eight go into 63? Eight. Seven. Seven, almost eight times, right? Really close to eight. What do we want to do? Eight. We're going to try the eight. Seven. Eight. <laughs> I'm going to try the eight because again, if this were, it's almost even a 64, right? So almost an eight should go into almost 64 eight times eight. So I'm going to try an eight. But hey, if you try a seven, no big deal. Eight times eight is. 64, let's carry a 6. 8 times 7 plus 6, uh, 62. Yeah. Now, it works, right? It fits. We subtract to get 15. What if you try to 7? You'd have been left with a remainder of 93. You know what that tells you? 7 wasn't big enough. Go back and do it again with an 8. No big deal, right? The, multi the division takes care of itself. Bring down the 6. And I know we don't know our 78 times tables, but we should have a pretty good guess as to how many times 78 goes into 156. Probably twice. Let's try it out. Sure enough. It comes out evenly, and that's how I would, that's kind of my thought process through the problem. But again, you try a number, and if it don't work, you try a different number. And the math tells you what to do. Any other questions? One, two, or three? Let's go on to the fractions here. Number five, I'm going to show these. What's the common denominator between eight and seven, class? 56. 56. You cannot add these as written. You've got to change the denominators to 56s. Well, you can't just randomly change a 7 into a 56, right? You've got to ch change a 7 by multiplying it by 8. eight. And what's you to the bottom? So I'm going to multiply the top by 8 to get 48. 48.56. So here, when I multiply top and bottom by 7, seven I get 35.56. Then just add them together. And what is that, 83.56? But I don't leave my answer like that. I reduce it down to a mixed number. 56 can go into 83. Once only once, and when we subtract away that 56 from the 83 leaves me with 27, 27 left over. So 1 and 27 to 56. I should see if I can reduce that. No. I can't. That's it. I already have 1 and 27 56. If you did, it doesn't make sense now, which you should have done. We remember it now. On the next one, similar idea. We've got a 9 and, or 8 and 1 ninth minus 2 and 4 fifths. Got to subtract. Can't, don't have a common denominator. 9 and 5, my number I want is? 45. 45. Oh, 36. 5 doesn't go to 36, though. Oh, never mind. Yeah, so 45 for sure the number we want. Though I'm always trying to think, of there, is there a smaller number? Top fraction class, multiply top and bottom by? Mm -hmm. 
five to get no, five. 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 Forty-fifths. Bottom one multiply top and bottom by nine, nine to get thirty-six. Thirty-six forty-fifths. And here's the problem. Can I take thirty-six forty-fifths from five no. forty-fifths? No. So I'm going to borrow from the An eight. Make it a seven. seven. And the one that I borrow becomes how many forty-fifths? Forty-five. Forty-five forty-fifths. And I'm going to add the forty-five forty-fifths to the five forty-fifths to really get how many here? Eight Fifty forty-fifths. Now I can subtract to get 14 40 fifths, and then 7 minus 2, of course, is 5. I should have gotten 5 and 14 40 fifths. How many have that? Ooh, only a couple of you. Does it make sense now if we missed it? Questions on that? For number 7, so much easier. I'm so glad we don't need common denominators to multiply. We just get to cancel stuff. What stuff can we cancel here, Lexi? Uh, the 15 and the 40. Cancel what? Uh, into 3, as 15 and uh, 4, and 8. Uh, 8 is 40. There we go. Take a 5 out of both of them, right? To get a 3 and an 8. Uh, anything else we can cancel here, Michael? 10, 20, 27. What can cancel? Uh, uh, 3. Okay, we could cancel a 3 there, or I could cancel this 3, right? I could do that as well. But it's no problem canceling a 3 out of the 24 and 27 to get 8. Good. What about the 3 and 9? Can I cancel those class? Mm. But it's really tempting. What about the 8 and 8? Mm. No, because they're next to each other. They're not top, bottom, or diagonal. So I just have to multiply across to get. 64 over 27. 64 over 27 is correct. And, uh, but we don't want to leave it like this. How many 27s can fit into 64? 52. 2, because 2 times 27 is 54. So I'll take out 54, which is 2 whole 27s are two of those 27s to leave me with how many left over 27s? 10, 10, 10. 10 27s left over. I only had two and 10 27s. Four, number seven. Okay, still not as many hands as I'd like to see. Questions, comments? All right, looking at number eight. It says 481st. I'm not even going to waste my time writing that on the board. I'm too lazy. I'm going to write 481st class times, times nine, nine fourths. I'm not going to write divided by four nines. I'm going to cancel away the? Four. Four is cleanly, and I can also cancel the 9 and 81 to get one, nine. one and 9, and so all that's left in the top, one. and all that's left in the bottom, nine. and there's my answer, 1, 9. To make sure we don't say, well, everything's gone in the top, so all I have is 9. Careful, there's an understood 1 or a written 1 in the top. How many have 1, 9? That's pretty straightforward there. Number 9, I can't multiply or divide mixed numbers. I've got to have... Oh, come what on. Is fraction? Oh, no, you gotta have uh, improper, improper fractions. fractions. Thank you. Fifteenth tries the charm, right? Improper fractions is what I gotta have, right? And so I'm gonna change the five and one third into sixteen, 16, 16 thirds. thirds. And it's going to be divided by what improper fraction? So sixty sevenths, right? But I'm gonna change that pretty quick, right? 16 thirds times 7 sixtieth. Not a lot to cancel. I can cancel what out of 16 and 60? Uh, At least three, a 2 four, to get four, four. 8 and 30. If you only saw the 2, and then we can cancel another 2 to get uh, four, and 15. 4 and 15. Or if you happen to know that they were both divisible by 4, you could have gotten 4 and 15 a little quicker. We'll multiply straight across the top. Uh, 28. 28 and across the bottom. 45. And uh, there we go. There's our answer. Again, not canceling the 3 and 15 because they're both denominators. And we got 28 40 fifths for this one here. All right, number 10. It says 1 fourth over 6. That's 1 fourth class divided, divided by 6 or 1 fourth times 1 6. Right? Flip the 6 to get 1 6, which multiplies easily to get 1 24. How many 1 24 for number 10? All right, number 11, we just, I wouldn't cross multiply here, though you could. I think the easier way is what Danielle was kind of explaining earlier. How do I go from a 10 to a 5? Multiply two. Divide by 2. Oh. So how do I, go, what do I do to the 20? Divide, divide two. 2 to get 10. 10. 10 is my answer for X. So we have 10. And for the next one, I've got a uh, 3 is to 19 is 9 is to X. How do I go from a 3 to a 9? Divide by three. Times 3. So go from 19 times 3 to get 57. All right, so again, you could cross multiply. I don't need to here. Questions on any of those 1 through 12. All right, let's quickly review some more things that we talked about toward the beginning of the year. One of those things was number classification, and this has given some of us fits this year. 
um, we said that uh, any number that is a nice, easy number, starting at 1, going to 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, we call these class our natural numbers. counting numbers, or natural numbers is the number that the book uses. Um, if I include 0 with the natural numbers, we now have what we call whole numbers. Whole numbers. If I also include like negative 1, negative 2, In negative 3, they're still nice easy numbers that I like. I like integers. integers. I like integers. I don't mind negatives. Okay, we're gonna, I'm going to teach negatives to you later, but I don't mind negatives. As long as there's no fractions or decimals, we have integers. Now, all of these, if we were to keep them and include fractions and decimals, so long as the decimals end at some point or they repeat at some point, we have what are called rational, rational numbers. Now, again, that means that 1, 2, 3, 4, those are rational as well, as is 0, as is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and so forth. As are fractions and decimals, as long as the decimals end or repeat. What if the decimal never ends, never repeats? Yeah. Now we have an irrational number. Of course, your roots are your irrational numbers. We also talked about negative exponents. And I said that a negative exponent class just means reciprocal. reciprocal. So this means the reciprocal of 2 cubed. Well, to make something a reciprocal, I just put it underneath 1. one. So 1 over 2 cubed, right? Unless it was like 1 over 5 to the negative second. Well, again, this means the reciprocal of 1 over 5 squared. Well, since it's already under 1, I would take a reciprocal by putting it 5 squared, five five squared over 1, or just 5 squared, okay? Um, but negative exponent means reciprocal. We had some fraction decimal equivalents that we need to have memorized. Uh, for instance, what would 0.4 repeating be as a fraction? Four ninths. Four ninths. What about 0.83 repeating? Five sixths. Five sixths. What about 0.16 repeating? One sixth. Six ninths. Six, 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 six ninths reduces to? Three. Two thirds. One third. Three ninths reduces to one third. Uh, seven eighths. Seven eighths. Five eighths. Five eighths. Three eighths. One eighth. You saw that coming, right? Yep. Uh, four fifths. Eight tenths reduces to four fifths. Three fifths. Six tenths reduces to three fifths. fifths. One over five. Uh, one fifth. <laughs> what? Yeah. Point four is two fifths. Three fourths. Three fourths. Point seven five is three quarters. I'm one five fourth. One fourth. Two fourths. A half. A half, right? And of course, we need to be able to go the other way around as well. For instance, we should know that this is point five. Point two five. Point seven five. Point four. Point two, point five, six, point six, point eight, point eight, point ten, point two, five, no. point one, two, five, point three, seven, five, point six, two, five, point eight, seven, five, point eight, seven, five, point two, three, point three, repeating, point six, repeating, point one, six, where just the six repeats. Point eight, eight, three. Point 0.83 repeating, just the three repeats. Point four, point four repeating. Good. Uh, we also talked about numbers that the only factors of those numbers are one and themselves. Uh, prime. Prime numbers. And if there's any other factors besides one in itself, it's a composite. composite number. There is a number, a couple numbers that are neither prime nor composite. Two. Zero and one. Zero and one are not prime or composite because the only factors of zero, well, anything could be a factor of zero. It's kind of a weird one, right? Uh, and then one, its only factor is one, right? Two is the only uh, even, even prime, prime number, right? Let's say those first few prime numbers together. Two, two three, three, five, seven, seven 11, 11, 13, 17, 19, 19 are the prime numbers I wanted you to memorize. We use those prime numbers for prime factoring. And we said if I had a number like uh, 72, I could prime factor it. By the factoring tree, I could split into any factors I can think of. Nine and, eight, 12. Nine and eight are the first ones that I think of, but maybe six and twelve are some numbers you think of. But I could factor the nine into three, three. three and three, and neither of these can factor further. They're prime. Eight could split into two, four. Four. two and four, where four and is two, composite, two. two and two. So I'd write this as two, 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 three, three, or two, two cubed, cubed times three, three squared. squared. If I had another number like, for instance, uh, 45, I could factor that into 95. 
All right, and then the nine factors into three and three. So I could write this as three times three times five or three squared, squared times five. If I were looking for the greatest common factor, I would look for what those two sets of factors, those two listings have in common. Well, what do both lists of factors have? Three threes. A couple of threes. So the greatest common factor is three times three or nine. nine. If I were looking for the least common multiple, I would be looking for winners. winners. Well, this is a clear winner of the twos by default. This is a clear winner of fives by default. But as far as the threes go, it's a tie. tie. So 72. 72 wins. Sorry, you were too late. Danielle said, four, just said 72. So we're going to cross those out as losers. We're going to take all the winners and multiply. So 2 times 2 times 2 eight, eight. times 3 24. times 3. 72. Okay. This is the whole factor of 72. <laughs> times 5. Uh, 30, 3,600. 3,600. There we go. 360 is our least common multiple. Uh, we talked about a percent. We said percent means? Uh, hundreds. So percent is always going to have how many decimal places? Two decimal. Two decimal places. And remember, we said if we're going from a decimal, like 0.7324, into a percent, I need to move the decimal right. two places to get 73.24%. percent But if I had a percent, like, I don't know, 6%. I'm going from a percent to a decimal. I'll move the decimal this direction two places to get 0 0.06. 0 .06. And of course, the percent sign falls off when we change the percent to a decimal. Um, as far as finding percent problems, I said if you remember that is means uh, equals uh, and of means multiplication. multiplication, and the what that you're finding is always X, X you can turn any percent problem into an equation. And if you do that, you can easily find percent, percentage, or base. I want you to work on page 135, numbers 13 to 20, actually goes to the next page, 13 to 24 on pages 135 to 136. 135 to 136, start on numbers 13 through 24. For the sake of the recording, I'm going to go past the bell. I will give you a pass to Bible. It took too long going over the homework. Picking on the plant. Wasted my time. Thanks, You're welcome. <laughs> Lexi's fault that they didn't fall. Show on. So we gotta put everyone's name on the pass except Lexi's, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> what a spiteful. <laughs> okay, I see how it is. So is he. <laughs> On the exam, are we going to be coming off of these uh, colon instead of a fraction for ratios? I, I prefer written as a fraction, but no, you wouldn't lose points. And I didn't do that on the last test either, that we had right ratios. I didn't take points off for that.
if you're watching on YouTube, you can pause the video. Students in here, I can't let you be too, too late to your next class. So we need to go ahead and stop where we're at and go over these. But I do want to be thorough as I go over them with you. Uh, number 13, which of those numbers can be called integers, class? Uh, zero. Zero. 22 and 0. Negative 4.5 is rational, but it's not an integer. 2 fifths is rational. It's not an integer, though. And pi, of course, is irrational. What's the decimal equivalent of 2 ninths? Point two, 0.2 repeating. What about 1 eighth? 1 25. Point 0.125. Point and then 1740 isn't memorized. What do I do if it's not Memorize. Top dog over. Divide. Top, Divide. Dog. Top dog in the house. Put the 40 outside. Add some zeros. And uh, let's do this. 4 goes into 17. Uh, four, three. 4 times. That's 160. That leaves us 10 left over. 4 goes into 10. Eight, two, 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 2 times. That's 80. That leaves me 20 left over. And 4 goes into 20. Five. 5 times, and 0. 0.425 is what we should get when we divide. And technically, if you happen to blank out on when you're like, I know I memorized this. What is 1 eighth? 1 in the house, 8 outside, add on 0. 0.000. Uh, number 15, Sanford has 11 pencils, 10 pens. What's the ratio of pens to pencils? 10 to 11. 10 to 11. Make sure we take the correct order there. Juanita owns a furniture store. She sold six couches, 20 recliners last month. What's the ratio of couches? to total pieces of furniture. Three to 13. It reduces to 3 to 13. It's 6 to 26 total. Reduce that to 3 to 13. Good. Car company gives a 20% employee discount on a truck costing three or $30,000. That'd be a cheap truck. $30,000 truck. Uh, what does it cost an employee to buy the truck? $24,000. Two ways to do this. You could take the $30,000. And you, could, and you could multiply it by 20% or 0 0.20, right? And that would give you $6,000 discount. That's not how much he pays, that's how much he saves. So you would subtract the $6,000 from the $30,000 to get $24,000. But there's a better way. And Hayden was shaking his head when he saw me set this up. He said, no, Mr. Nadasky, we should do what? Uh, subtract the 20 from 100% and get a, a point, 80% or 0 0.8. There we go. If he saves 20%, then that means he has to pay 80% or 0.8. So we multiply the $30,000 by 0.8. Or in other words, 8 times 3 is 24. Don't forget to add on all four of those zeros, and then you put in one decimal place. That ends up coming to $24,000 spent. How many had that regardless of which way you solved it? All right, continuing on here. Last year, tickets to the zoo cost $14. This year, tickets cost $16. What's the percent of change? Um, how do we find percent of change, class? Uh, change change over over. Over. What's the change? Two. Two, two over the original? 14. 14. And again, this is just annoying. I'd reduce it to a seven first, and then put the one in the house, the seven outside. And seven goes into 10. Four. I mean, one. one. One's with three left. Seven goes into four. 30. Four. four with two left. Seven goes into 20. Two. Two times. It's going to keep going, but when we round the nearest whole percent, we're going 14 percent decrease our answer, or increase, excuse me, increase. The price went up. Uh, what's the GCF of 50 and 65? Five. Five. Again, you're going to factor into two times five times five for the 50. 65 is going to be uh, 